Hey everyone, welcome to Tuber Tunes. I'm Luke. In today's video covering the Manchester Animation Festival, I'm going to be reviewing the film Calamity, A Childhood of Martha Jane Canary. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm going to be covering a whole host of films and events from the Manchester Animation Festival running over the next two weeks. And first off, I'm going to be reviewing a French animated feature telling the tales of the young adventures of Calamity Jane. It's sort of a Calamity Jane origin story. Although I'll say this is not the Calamity Jane that I am familiar with from the like stage musical, which is based off the 1950s film. Although what it does have in common with that film and musical is that it is just as wildly inaccurate as of course that's not always a bad thing and I will talk a bit more about that later. So this film came out as part of the Family Day from the Manchester Animation Festival online event. I'm not entirely sure on a release date, it did come out on the 14th of October in France. I'm not sure when it's eventually going to head to the UK and the rest of the world outside of festivals. But for now I watched it at the Manchester Animation Festival and if you are in the UK you are able to purchase a ticket for £5 to watch the film on the Manchester Animation Festival online website. Or if you have a festival pass at the discounted price of £3. And this is going to be a non-spoiler review so if you haven't seen the film yet and you do want to decide whether or not it's for you, you have found the right video. So just to give you a quick summary of the film, the film starts off showing us Martha Jane Canary looking after her two siblings as they and their father are travelling in a community by wagon out west to find a new town to live in. After her father becomes injured, Martha takes it upon herself to learn how to drive the wagon, to lasso horses and starts dressing like a boy to the horror of most of her community. You know, she has this Mulan moment where you see a cut her own hair. Uh, one day Martha runs into someone from the core who tells them that the community is lost and redirects them in the correct direction because it turns out they've been going the wrong way. But not long later, a series of items go missing. And with Solomon, the man Martha found disappeared, Martha is accused of helping a thief and being a thief herself. So she sets out to find Samson and prove her innocent. And we see her go through a series of adventures along the way, meeting a few different people, even joining the American Gold Rush. And like I said, this is a sort of origin story for Calamity Jane and we see just exactly what it takes and how she gets her name. So my first thoughts, my initial reactions from seeing this film is that I actually really enjoyed it. It aired on the family day at math and yet yeah, it's perfectly suitable for children but just because I'm sure children will love and enjoy it doesn't mean that it's not suitable for adults. It is a true family film and I feel like people of all ages can enjoy it. You know, I really enjoyed this film. I love the characters in the film. I thought there's some really great arcs and I think there was a really nice message in the film. I thought it was really well paced. I thought the story overall was good. Uh, quite simple but there was lots going on at the same time and the visuals were amazing. I'll go into a bit more of that in depth in a minute. Overall I really like this film and I'll definitely watch it again. So like I said the visuals for this film are amazing. I love the style of the film with the character designs. Uh, this film didn't use line art for its characters apart from obviously things like the nose and the mouths that required some sort of definition. The characters were made out of like just the block colours without any line art around them. And I'm not saying I've never seen it before, but you don't see it very often, I feel. And it's always nice to look at, especially not in a feature film. It's a little bit more common in short films, but in a feature film like this, it was a really nice style to look at. I think it really helped blend the characters in with the backgrounds. And it just all looks like one complete image. There was no like distinction between here's the animated characters and here's the background. It was all this like nice one cohesive image where it all just looked like it fit together and if you pause it sort of looked a bit like a painting. It just had this really nice aesthetic to it. I also thought the colours in this film were just gorgeous to look at. They were really bright and vibrant yet they had this sort of like old timely feel to it. Almost like when you look at a sepia photograph, not that the whole film had a sepia filter on it, it didn't, but the colour palette was just very it felt nostalgic and it felt like and it helped place you in like the 1890s setting that the film takes place in which I think is great because it's both beautifully vibrant but also helps to visually tell the story and set the scene of where the film takes place. I will say a lot does happen in this film it, and it sort of almost feels like the adventures of young Calamity Jane because there's like so many different like sections of the film where I feel like you could break up into like 10 or 15 minute chunks where like different distinct things happen that are like 
aren't necessarily all completely related to the overall plot of the film. I mean there is definitely a through line of the film, like there's, there's a plot going on and most of these events do end up like moving the story forward. But you know the film takes place over a quite a large time span. When she does go off on her adventures that's meant to take place over around four months, but definitely a, quite a significant amount of time passes before she sets off on that adventure to begin with. And I can definitely break the film down into lots of different sections. Now I'm not saying that is a bad thing, I think that actually works in the film's strength. This film is around 85 minutes long, but it manages to pack a lot of story beats in within that time. And like I said, each section does end up moving the story forward, but it might not just be in the most direct way. Calamity has this sort of goal that she wants to reach, but maybe it takes a few little side journeys to get there. Along each way she does find something that's gonna advance her a little bit further, even though it was sort of a side track, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to say without like going into too many details, but you know when she sets out to prove her innocence and like, you know, she's off and she's looking for Samson, she runs into a few different groups of people and we have lots of little different adventures where yeah the entire time she's looking for Samson, but you know she's still able to help find gold but you know she's still able to help for instance find gold in the gold rush or help a man with a bear kind of but i do just think it helps to like give us the sense of that martha or calamity whatever you want to call her has been through it this shows her journey and her progress and shows how she becomes the historical figure that is calamity jane that we all know and love speaking of the historical figure of calamity jane is this film historically accurate? No, nah, not really. But like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now before doing this review, I did a very, very quick um, research on the character. Cause although I did know she was a historical figure, Oscar's come to say hello. Hello. My only other exposure to the character is from the musical. And I just thought, well, this seems to be a wildly different character to the one found there. So I thought before doing this review, I would Oscar. <laughs> and so I thought before <laughs> And so I thought before doing this review I'd have a, a brief look at the true life of her. I thought maybe this film would be slightly more historically accurate. There was a few details in it where I thought, oh maybe that's more accurate than what I did see in the musical because I knew the musical was incredibly outlandish. Of course I did find that this film is almost just as inaccurate as the musical. Uh, the film does open with her mother having previously died, uh, this is something that was true, she died of pneumonia, around this time before her father took Martha and her siblings on a journey across the country. Now this did happen. A few differences were in real life she had five siblings, in this film she only has two, but to be honest the siblings within the film didn't really do much other than cry and be a little bit annoying, really. So you can understand why they got rid of three of them, because the two that they had, they barely used. It would have been pointless to animate five siblings. Also in real life, their journey across country was from Montana to Utah. In this film, they were traveling to Oregon. So that seems like an arbitrary change at first, like why would they change that? But of course I have mentioned that this film does feature the gold rush. Now I have talked previously about the American gold rush in my episode of the myth behind the monsters covering the minor 49er. So for more on that go check that one out. But basically the gold rush happened on the west coast, mainly in California but also slightly above in the Oregon area. And so I feel like this film chose to move Martha's family's destination from Utah to Oregon just so that when she does go off on her adventures she could sort of take part in the gold rush as it is sort of an interesting thing that was happening in that era that the film is set in in the 1890s. And also like from what I could find Martha didn't go off on a huge adventure like this at the age of 12 and that's how she got a name. It, it seems that she got the name when she was a lot older after her father had died and she'd raised her siblings herself and lots of stuff. There's many different 
conflicting sources of how she actually got her name. She claims she got it after fighting campaigns against the Native Americans, whereas other people claim she never actually fought the Native Americans, and that was more of a promotional marketing story for her. So we're not entirely sure how she definitely got her name, but it probably wasn't how it happened in this film. Is that a bad thing though? No. Sometimes the historically accurate versions of stories are just not the most interesting ones. I don't think we were wanting to see a film where Marth had to struggle to help raise her five siblings. I'm sure you could have found something interesting there, but I don't think it would have been anywhere near as interesting as the film it got, you know? And plus, animated films aren't necessarily always known for being the most historically accurate. Look at Pocahontas. So yeah, it's not historically accurate, but I don't actually care. It just allowed them to sort of use the character to tell an interesting story. I just thought it was something worth mentioning. Uh, now, I did like the relationship between Martha Jane and Ethan. Ethan was the boy at the start of the film that seemed to start picking on her. I felt like it was quite a complex relationship the two of them had, and it went through a full arc that I did feel like actually made sense and it worked within the story, it didn't feel forced. I felt like there was a lot of natural character growth and development there between the two characters which I thought was great and it was really fun to see. Just because at, at the, you know, you go from not liking the character of Ethan at all to he warmly starts to grow on you. So I actually really, considering he wasn't like the hugest part of the film, I thought it was really nice what they were able to do with the character there and specifically his relationship with Martha and I liked her interactions with him as well. Uh, so yeah, that was all good stuff. Do I have any negatives about the film? <laughs> None that really jumped out to me. One thing I will say that did feel a little eh. To be honest, to talk about this, it's gonna be a slight spoiler. So if you haven't seen this film yet and you don't want anything spoiled for you, just jump on over to the next chapter. The time codes are in the description or you can look on the video progress bar. All right, so um, spoilers coming, you have been warned. The character of Ethan's father I think he's called Abraham. Obviously he's the sort of character that you aren't really meant to like. He's very opposed to Martha towards the start of the film. You know, he doesn't like her wearing boys clothes and doing traditionally male things like riding the horse and, and he's very untrusting of her. These aren't nice traits but they were traits that were very true to the time and unfortunately they are still true to some people nowadays. Now a very sexist, misogynistic and not very understanding type of person but of course that does work in the film, it works well, it's a great character foil for Martha and you know I really didn't like this character. <laughs> it worked, he served a purpose in the film yet. Yeah. I thought it was a little one note, but at the same time, he still liked Martha's father, you know, and he still took up for her a little bit at the start of the film because he'd made a promise to her mother or something. And he is, of course, the person that accuses her of being a thief and working hand in hand with Samson. And here's the spoiler bit. At the end of the film, when Martha returns to the community, he is incredibly accepting of her and he's like, oh, we're going to listen to Martha now, or as she's now called Calamity Jane, because she knows what she's talking about. And it's one of those things, it's like, yay, I'm happy he's being nice to her now, but I don't think it made sense in character, in story. Like, I get that Ethan had owned up to convincing Samson to leave, and so he knows Martha wasn't a thief. Yeah, I get that. I understand why you wouldn't blame her for that, because he now knows the truth. But at the same time, I find it a little odd that he just suddenly is ready to accept her. But I do find it a little odd that he's easily able to accept her still dressing like a boy and acting like a boy, in his opinion. But I do still find it odd that he just immediately accepts her because in his eyes she isn't acting like a girl like she should be. Which would seem to be the major issue he had with her earlier on in the film. It, it just sort of feels like, oh it's the end of the film, let's wrap things up all nicely and he's just like, yeah now I'm gonna accept her. They do give him a line where he sort of says, oh well she's managed to make it this long by herself for the past four months, you know, she must know what she's talking about out and it's like yeah you have a point there but I don't expect someone like you to think logically like that you know like I did think it just seemed a little odd and out of character that particular man would become suddenly so accepting of her I could maybe understand her father being a little bit more ex accepting of her I could even maybe understand if he would was a little bit more willing to listen to some of her advice because she'd been out there and she had the experience and she'd seen these things but I still wouldn't have expected him to be just so openly accepting of her and who she is because he just wasn't at the start of the film and it feels like we missed some sort of character growth from him. He went from being like cruel and malicious to warm and welcoming, you know, completely off screen. 
I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, it was the very end of the film. Pretty much everything else had been wrapped up. I, I understand why I didn't put, want to put too much focus on him and, like, develop that. So it's only a minor thing, really. But it was one of those things when we watched it, I was like, oh, okay, we're doing that, aren't we? Right. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's it. Uh, spoilers are over. So yeah, just my final thoughts. I really enjoyed this film. I definitely would watch it again. I definitely recommend this film. If you haven't heard of it, I'd definitely go seek it out when it does become available. If, Like I said, if you are in the UK, you are able to buy access to this film over the next two weeks for £5. And I definitely think it's worth that. You know, I'm not sure if it was eventually going to be released in cinemas. I feel like that's looking very unlikely this year with lockdown still happening and everything. <laughs> but you never know, cinemas might reopen soon. And this might be a film that's coming to them. I couldn't find any, any information online about a UK release. I'm sure it will all be out eventually for people to watch. So like I said, I'm not sure if it is coming out at the cinemas. But if it was, I think it definitely would be worth a trip to the cinema. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a really fun story. I really liked the characters and the visuals were great. It would have been amazing to see in a bigger screen. Of course, I had to just watch it at home on my tablet screen. But you know, that's the year we're living in. I definitely recommend this film. I thought it was a really fun watch, a really good solid story. There was lots of fun moments that, throughout the film, lots of different things to take away. I think different people are going to love different parts of the film and there's different characters. Even though Martha is the main character, you know, there are lots of different to latch onto that you might like. So yeah, I really liked this film. I think, I think Martha serves as like a really good, strong female role model for little girls. So yeah, so what's not to love? Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps the video get seen by more people. And if you want to see more videos of me covering the Manchester Animation Festival, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified the next time one of my videos comes out. The next one that I'm doing is going to be on the work in progress screening of The Inventor. The screening is actually available now and they're going to be doing a Q&A on Tuesday so I'm going to watch the screening and the Q&A so that I've got a few different things to talk about. Uh, that This is one of the screenings that is available internationally so if you are interested again it's five pounds to purchase a ticket for the screening of, of the Inventor Work in Progress. But it's going to be available until the 30th of this month and anyone from all over the world can watch it. So if you want to watch it before my video comes out so you know what I'm going to be talking about, feel free, but also don't worry. My video isn't really going to be spoiling anything so you can always watch my video first and decide whether or not you want to buy a ticket for the screening. But yeah, uh, so watch out for that. It's coming out in the next two days, I think. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching Tube of Tunes. If you want more from the channel, hit subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow us on our socials. Hope you liked it. Cheers.